Okay, we're live. Hey, everybody, this is Bradley Benner with Keto VIP. This is the orientation and Q&A webinar. Uh, it is March 2nd at 5 p.m. Eastern, and I'm really excited to be here. Uh, we have about 15 people registered. It's not a whole lot, but that's okay. Um, and we've got some questions that were submitted ahead of time, so I will go ahead and get into some of those questions. But before I do, uh, post in the chat box, guys. Just let me know who's here and um, your name and who you are and, you know, what uh, I guess where you're from. So that way I can kind of get to know you guys a little bit. Um, and like I said, in the meantime, wow, because I know there's a little bit of a delay between what I'm saying uh, and what you guys hear. So <clears throat> I'll go ahead and look, open up the questions, <clears throat> excuse me, that were already submitted and we'll start getting into some of those. And then, like I said, today, uh, I'm just here to answer questions, guys, and kind of chat a little bit, find out who uh, who you are, what kind of results you're trying to get, you know, here, what kind of questions you have. I know there's a lot of questions, especially with the when the diet is new. And uh, I've been on it for almost a year and a half now. So <clears throat> although I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist or a physical fitness trainer or any of that stuff, I... I have my own personal experience that I can share and uh, hopefully answer some questions for you guys and motivate you to stay on track and do the right thing. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the screen so you're not staring at my face <laughs> and we're going to jump into the questions that are available. Okay, you guys should be seeing my screen now. Let me kind of get this and then I'll come back and check on questions in a little bit. If you guys have anything to post in the chat box, please do, like I said. All right, so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, the first question we had was from Latoya. She says, "Submit uh, excuse me, how can you safely get into ketosis faster, and what's the best way to check to see if you are actually in ketosis? Great question, Latoya. The uh, first thing is, the, if, how can you safely get into ketosis faster? Well, number one is stick to the actual nutritional ketosis diet. In other words, make sure that you're eating uh, mostly fat. Um, the rate, the exact macro ratio should be somewhere around 70% fat, uh, about 20 to 25% protein, and 5 to 10% carbs. And it's very, very important. I talk about this almost, it, it, almost every question that I get asks, you know, how to know if people are, how to, how to know if you're in ketosis, and uh, why am I not losing weight or all that kind of stuff. And, and a lot of the times it's because people aren't tracking their calories. And I know that some people say that on the ketogenic diet, you don't need to track your calorie intake. But I, I don't see how that's possible um, because it's simple thermogenesis. It's like calories in, calories out. You have to expend more calories than you consume, right? You have to. Otherwise, you're not burning fat for fuel or you're not losing weight. You're not burning excess fat. My point is if you're eating a – a high fat diet you're taking you're in you're consuming or ingesting dietary fat and so your body's first going to turn to dietary fat for energy and when you're in ketosis right and then once it runs out of dietary fat like from what you've eaten then it's going to turn to your fat stores that are in your fat cell the you know the accumulated fat and the fat cells in your body that's what it's going to turn to so you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight and and again i know some people say that they can be on in ketosis and not have to count calories. I, I just don't understand how that's possible. Maybe it is, but for in my own personal experience, the only way that I've been able to lose weight is to uh, track my calorie intake. The reason why, and, and always, excuse me, and always make sure that I'm in a calorie deficit. And the reason why I chose the ketogenic diet was because there's no um, lack of energy when you're on a ketogenic diet. I've tried calorie restrictive diets in the past that weren't the ketogenic diet. In other words, just like, you know, I've tried low calorie, uh, low fat diets. I've tried the strict Atkins diet before, which was a higher protein amount and that kind of thing. And whenever I would go into a calorie restriction, I would have no energy. I would like literally be tired all the damn time and angry and uh, irritable. <laughs> and, uh, and I couldn't get through any sort of exercise, any sustained exercise because I just had no energy. And it was, so the ketogenic diet to me was um, amazing. It's like magic because once my body reached ketosis, I was able to tap into my fat stores for energy, which I was carrying plenty of that around. I had plenty of energy on me, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, from that point forward, I was able to, like, I, I, virt I have virtually unlimited energy. And I know I say that in some of my videos, but that's the truth. I, I swear at 38 years old, I've got more energy now than I did in my mid 20s. Um, it's crazy. And uh, and I'm I just feel good all the damn time. So 
um, as far as like how do you get into ketosis faster, number one is make sure that you're uh, following the actual diet itself, okay? Number two, if you um, are following the diet, one way to get rid of the excess glucose and, and or glycogen, glycogen is like stored energy within the muscle fibers themselves and glucose is the, you know, metabolized carbohydrates, metabolized sugar in your blood. And so you need to drain the glucose from your body first and then lastly glycogen, right? And once your glycogen stores have been depleted from your muscle fibers, that's when ketosis really happens. And so there's a couple things that you can do. One, you can supplement with exogenous ketones. I do that every day. I've been taking Keto OS. Uh, if you want to find out more about it, uh, you can go to ketovip.com and there's some information on it there. You can also go to Benner. Um, uh, actually, you can go to ketovip.com forward slash prove it, P-R-U-V-I-T, and that'll take you over to the Keto OS site that I have. Um, and I've been taking those or using Keto OS or Keto Cream. Those are the two kinds that I use of the exogenous ketones for about, well, since November of 2015. So that's what, about a year and four months or so. Um, and, and I use them every day because I, first of all, I, I consume a little bit higher amount of protein than I probably typically should, uh, on a strict ketogenic diet, but because I do a lot of strength training. And so sometimes consuming too much protein will knock me out of ketosis. And so I use exogenous ketones because it puts me back into ketosis very, very quickly. But the other thing that you can do is exercise, especially with something like uh, high intensity interval training or a more extreme version of that's called sprint interval training. And I'm going to recommend a book in just a moment um, that was just published on February 17th, and I read it last week. It's amazing. It's all about uh, high-intensity interval training and sprint interval training. But you can actually deplete your glycogen stores in your muscles very, very quickly by just doing uh, a high-intensity interval training workout. And um, and what's amazing about that sort of a of an exercise program is that you can literally get the benefits of like an hour's worth of sustained or what they call steady state cardio in about 20 to 30 minutes time with really only about five to eight minutes of, of, of physical exertion. Like what I mean is like if you're doing sprint interval training or high intensity interval training, you could do something like where you're on an exercise bike and you go as hard as you can for 60 seconds. I mean like literally as hard as you can where your legs are going to fall off and then you just do a, uh, and then at the end of that 60 seconds, you just, basically move your pedal, the, the pedals, just move your feet. You're not trying hard or anything for about four minutes. So it's a five minute cycle with only one minute of sustained physical exertion, but it's all out exertion, right? And so that's one cycle. You do that six times, that's 30 minutes on the exercise bike. And you can do this on a treadmill. You can do it on a stair machine. You could do burpees. If you're familiar with what burpees are, it really doesn't matter what, uh, you know, act, the actual exercise mo movement is. Um, but it's to get your heart rate up and you go full, full on hard as you can for a, a minute and in four minutes of non-exercise or rest or just like walk a walking pace or a slow pedal pace if you're doing an exercise bike, whatever. So you do that for 30 minutes. It's only six minutes of physical exertion and the other 24 minutes is the rest periods in between and you can get the same benefit as somebody that's doing like 75% of their full on speed on an exercise bike for 45 or 50 minutes. And there's been a ton of research done on this. Uh, again, I just read a book last week. I, I went to Dallas. I flew out to Dallas last week for a business conference. And on the flight there and back, I read this amazing book. It's called The One Minute Workout. And again, it was just recently published. This guy, this doctor has been a physiologist and all this a researcher. He's been studying it for 40 years. Um, and so again, very, very effective way to get into ketosis very quickly. In fact, if you're testing yourself and that's the next part of your question, what's the best way to check to see if you're actually in ketosis? Well, use ketone test strips. Um, I've used, uh, several different ver versions of them. They, I used to use a breath test, uh, breath analyzer while well, it was, um, disposable ketone breath testers. Okay. And they, but I don't even think they sell them anymore. Um, but you, you can also use keto keto sticks and there's a whole bunch of them. You can just go to Amazon and search ketone test strips and you can find them. And I think it's important when you're first starting the ketogenic diet to, to test yourself regularly. I don't test myself near as much as I used to because I've been on it for so long now. I pretty much know I can tell, um, you know, I know what to do to try to stay in ketosis all the time. And, um, and, and again, I also supplement with exogenous ketones twice a day. I do it one in one scoop in the morning before I go to the gym. And then I drink a keto cream, which is essentially just MCT powder and cinnamon and stuff. Uh, in the afternoon, right around three or four o'clock. In fact, I just had a 
a coffee about 35 minutes ago. I do that every day. So that helps me to stay in ketosis. But again, when you're first starting out, you want to check yourself regularly because you want to know when you're in ketosis. And then once you actually reach ketosis, continue monitoring and testing yourself while you're eating things on a regular basis so that you can determine like if certain foods kick you out of ketosis or not, right? And then you can adjust accordingly, okay? So getting into ketosis faster, again, I, I highly recommend, uh, number one, follow the actual diet. Make sure that you're staying strict. Track your calorie intake and your macro intake. It's more important that if you want to lose weight, you need to track your calorie intake and be in a calorie deficit. But if you want to just make sure that you're in ketosis, regardless of whether you're losing weight or not, you need to track your macros and then you should be testing yourself. Okay, so you can supplement with exogenous ketones and you can also um, <clears throat> go through some heavy interval training. Or what I mean heavy interval, I just mean interval training and you can actually deplete glycogen stores very, very quickly that way and reach ketosis. In fact, if you do um, exercise, you can do it with steady state cardio, by the way, it just takes a lot longer. And I'm all about efficiency, especially when working out. I, I you know, I want to try to get the biggest bang for my buck in the shortest amount of time, so to speak. And so interval training is a fantastic way to do it. All right. And, uh, and oftentimes after, you know, prolonged exercise or an interval training session, if you were to test yourself, you'll notice that you'll be in ketosis. And that's, uh, apparently because if you're burning, fat at all throughout your exercise, uh, you know, when you're exercising, then it will turn into ketones. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I know that, uh, I know that I've, I've, you know, and through testing of myself that I, I'm always the darkest purple after working out. If that makes sense. Okay. All right, cool. Let me see if there's any questions or comments. Robert from Columbia. Robert's the only one that has made a comment so far. So anyways, well, thanks Robert. I appreciate that. Uh, if you have any questions, man, just post them right in the, uh, chat box and I'll get get to him briefly once I finish these other ones. Okay, so Kelly White's up. She says, does straight vodka within the first month prevent one from getting into ketosis? Why would I gain weight once in ketosis? Okay, number one, um, vodka itself shouldn't knock you out of ketosis, but because there's no carbohydrates in vodka, unless it's flavored vodka, in which case it could have some carbohydrates. Um, there's calories, but there's no carbs in, in vodka. Again, unless it's flavored vodka, in which case it could have some carbohydrates. However, alcohol prevents fat oxidation. Okay. So you have to keep that in mind. And look, I'm a beer drinker and getting on the, going on the ketogenic diet really sucked for me because I love beer. My favorite kind of beer is IPA, uh, India Pale Ale, and that's full of carbs. <laughs> and so I had to give it up and it sucks. And uh, so now I still drink beer. I drink like one beer, maybe two beers a night, but I drink Miller Lite which is 3.2 carbs. Um, and typically I will only drink one, but some occasionally I'll drink two. But yeah, I mean, if I want to catch a buzz, which I don't really do that very often anymore, but if I do, I will drink vodka. That's what I, I drink, potato vodka, which um, the the best or the potato vodka brand that I like is, uh, let me say this right, Chopin. <laughs> Chopin is potato vodka. And I like that because it's not made from grains, right? Normal, most vodkas are made from grain. Well, I don't eat any grains, right? On the ketogenic diet, you don't eat grains. So I, I prefer, and I know we don't eat potatoes either, but I'd still prefer a potato vodka over a grain vodka. So, but again, vodka itself does not contain carbs, but uh, it prevents fat oxidation. When your body is breaking down the alcohol or metabolizing the alcohol, it will not metabolize fat, right? So you just have to keep that in mind, okay? So the alcohol itself should not knock you out of ketosis, but it will prevent fat oxidation. And again, guys, I'm not a doctor. So I'm if, if I'm wrong on this, I, I can just tell you through my own reading and experiences and stuff like that, what I've, because I've investigated that as well. You know what I mean? Because again, somebody that loves beer as much as I do, I had to give it up and I was looking for alternatives. And um, I found potato vodka could be about the best for not affecting my ketosis. That makes sense. Right? Next, why would I gain weight once in ketosis? Kelly, Again, if you're eating more calories than you're burning in a day, you will gain weight. Um, period. It's 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 simple calculation. You know, you got to figure out what your uh, daily calorie number is. That's what I call it. What what whatever your daily caloric requirements are, right? And um, they there's what's called a basal metabolic rate. That's a uh, um, BMR, basal metabolic rate, but that is tip, that's like just the bare minimum amount of calories to keep your body functioning. Um, then there's just, you know, your normal data, your, your normal, like how many calories you would burn in a day, like just doing normal activities, right? Not, I'm not talking about adding any exercise. I'm talking about just your, you know, 
living a sedentary lifestyle where you're not moving much. Uh, and a lot of people I know that are getting on the ketogenic diet, they're really overweight. And so probably they're going to be sedentary. And so that's, that's my, I always base my daily calorie number on being sedentary. And then, uh, you know, you can, and, and here, let me walk through this because I got you guys on here. I, I've, I've posted this many times in the group, but I know not everybody reads all the posts because there are a lot of them. So go to calculator.net, okay, calculator.net, and right here where it says calorie calculator, you want to click on that, and then you're going to put your age in there. So like I'm going to put my name, age in, I'm 38, I'm select male, I'm 5 foot 11, on a good day I'm 6 foot, uh, my weight right now is 213 pounds. In fact, it's crazy guys, but the last webinar I did um, for the group, well the first webinar I did for the group was the last one, and, uh, and that was about... I don't know, six weeks ago or something like that. And at that time I was 225 pounds and I've lost about 12 pounds in the last six weeks. And it's just because I was on a, uh, like I said, I do a lot of strength training and I do CrossFit and all that stuff now. And so I was intentionally on a build or bulk cycle or, or a build cycle, so to speak. And I was on one for four months. And so I went from 213 at my lowest point uh, about five months ago, five or six months ago. That was, that was, I had gotten all the way down to 213. And then I started a build cycle and I stayed on that for about four months and I got up to actually 228. So I actually put 15 pounds on. But then um, at the beginning of February, I went back on a cut cycle and I've actually lost uh, about about 11 pounds in a month. And total since the, um, since the last webinar, I've gotten, I'm all the way back down to 213. And so what the only reason I'm telling you that, guys, is because it's awesome. Once you learn how to hack your body, so to speak, right? So once you learn how to once you get into ketosis and you start losing the weight, then it's like you know how to do it. Then everything becomes easier. You know, once you've done something, it's it becomes easier to do, right? And so, even though I was on a build cycle and I started gaining weight, and that's a little bit scary too, by the way, when you're you know been watching the scale drop for months and months and months, the numbers drop on the scale, and then all of a sudden they start to go back up. Even though it was intentional, it was a little bit unnerving. Um, but like I said, I got to the point where I gotten back up to about two twenty eight. And, uh, and I knew you, you can't gain muscle without gaining fat. There's just no way. So typically when you gain muscle for it, it's about a one to one ratio if you're still eating clean, which I've been eating clean, uh, but I was just eating in a calorie surplus. And so we're going to look at the calorie number here in just a moment, but I was eating in a calorie surplus. So for about 15 pounds that I gained about seven and a half pounds roughly was, was muscle and seven and a half pounds was fat. And so what I do is I go on a cut cycle, build cycle, cut cycle, build cycle. That's what I'm doing now. For the first year, I, all I did was a cut cycle. Um, but now I'm doing an alternating build and cut cycle. So I'll, I'll build for a month or two, and then I'll cut for a month. And then I'll build for a month or two, and then I'll cut for a month. And that's what I just started. And it's amazing to be able to drop. Uh, you know, when I started actually really going back into a, a hard calorie deficit again, which was at the very beginning of February, I was 225. So I lost 12 pounds in about, you know, a little over four weeks, which is crazy. I mean, that's awesome to just be able to flip the switch and start losing weight again. But it's really that simple once you dial your numbers in, guys. And that's that's all it is. It's just dialing your numbers in. And here's the good starting point. So I'm going to say 38, male, 5'11", 213 pounds, which is my current weight. And I'm going to put sedentary, little or no exercise, because I just want to know what, if I did nothing today, uh, but sat around on the couch all day, which I don't ever do anymore. But if I if I had, I wanted to know I want to know like how many calories I should expect to burn. Now, guys, this is not a hundred percent accurate, but it's a good benchmark, good starting point. So if I click on this, it's going to tell me right here that I need twenty two hundred ninety. So I'm going to say twenty three hundred calories a day to maintain my weight. Okay, so. For every, there's roughly 500, or excuse me, roughly 3,500 calories in a pound of fat, all right? So if you want to burn a pound a week or lose a pound a week, then you should be in a 500 calorie deficit per day. So in other words, you want to consume 500 calories less than what your number should, says, okay? If you want to lose two pounds per week, it should be 1,000 calories less. If you want to lose a pound and a half, it'd be 750 calories per day deficit. Does that make sense? But here's the thing. If I were to try to live on 2,300 calories, I could do it. But if I wanted to lose weight and I tried to cut my size the way that I am, if I were to cut 500 calories from 2,300, that would leave me with 1,800 calories a day. I can't survive. Like, I'm sure I could survive and I'd, be, I'd lose weight, but I would be irritable as hell. 
I would hate it because I'd be hungry all the damn time. And and part of the reason why I like uh, the ketogenic diet is that I'm not hungry as, as, as often as I was on other types of diets. And, um, you know, the, 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 the fat just melts off. But that's where exercise comes in. So if I could eat 2,300 calories a day, but I can burn 500 calories a day with exercise, then I'm still hitting that 500 calorie a day deficit, but I'm eating 2,300 calories. That's a hell of a lot more reasonable to me than trying to live on 1800 calories, right? Does that make sense? And so in all reality, I've been going to the gym, you know, I, I, I work out for roughly 60 to 75 minutes per day. Um, it's just part of my routine now. And so I burn anywhere between 800 to 1200 calories a day, depending on the intensity level. Uh, and, and that varies day by day, depending on what kind of workouts I'm doing. So on, a, on an average basis, I burn a thousand calories a day at the gym. Right. So my and, and I, I, by the way, I, I wear a Fitbit. Uh, and so the Fitbit tracks my calorie um, burn throughout the day as well. And um, in fact, I'll probably fire up the webcam here in a minute and show you guys some screenshots or whatever on my phone to show you because there's something else really cool. Um, there's a digital scale called but made by weight gurus that uh, has an app and it talks to your phone and like it makes it super easy to track like your weight loss and your body fat, uh, body mass index, or which I don't really care about BMI, but um, all that kind of stuff, it's really cool. And so I, I kind of recommend that you guys do that. But my point is burning, you know, 800, or let's say a thousand calorie a day uh, is, is on average what I burn um, through exercise. And my Fitbit shows me that on, I, you know, I burn anywhere between 32 to 3,500 calories a day. And so right now I have my um, calorie goal in my fitness pal app set for 2,500 calories a day. Does that make sense? So m basically I'm, my calorie goal is set for 2,500 calories. That's how many calories I consume every day. I try to stay at or below 2,500 calories a day. And I track everything I eat, everything that goes in my mouth, I track it, right? And so, and I've been doing that for a year and 15, like a, uh, a year and five months now. And, um, so if I hit the, my 2,500 calorie mark, even on a normal sedentary type day, I hit that. I, I know this is saying 2,300. It's not 100% accurate, but my um, Fitbit will tell me it's rare that I'm sedentary for an entire day, but sometimes it happens. And I usually will burn between 26 and 2,800 calories on one of those days. But because I'm active all the time uh, for, you know, through exercise and stuff now, I typically burn between 34 and 3,600 calories a day. So if I'm eating 2,500 calories a day, then I'm usually hitting between a 900 to 1100 per day deficit right now, currently, because I'm on a cut cycle, right? And that's why I've been able to lose pretty much two pounds a week for the last month. Um, it's crazy, right? It, but it's so simple. Once you get your numbers out in, guys, and it's going to take you some playing around with your own dietary, uh, your diet needs, right? You're going to have to play with your numbers until you get them right. And then once you get them right, it's that simple. All you need to do is follow your plan that you, you know, determined works for you anytime you want to lose weight. And then if you want to start gaining weight, which I was doing for four months or four or five months, um, I was eating a 500 calorie surplus. I was eating 3,500 calories a day. And, um, and you know, in fact, I would eat damn near 4,000 calories a day um, many days of the week. And it was nice to be able to eat that much for a while. But, uh, you know, I put on the weight that I wanted to and then I had to cut it again. And that's kind of like the cycle that I'm going to go in. So probably like, uh, you know, two months of building, one month of cutting, two months of building, one month of cutting. And that's going to basically follow the cycle that we have set up for the Keto VIP 30 day challenge. I'm going to be holding a new 30 day challenge every um, every three months, every quarter. And that's going to be my cut cycle every month. So in part, there's a selfish reason for me doing it, the Keto VIP challenge. And that's to keep me on my um my cut you know keep me disciplined to do my cut cycle every three months right and then the the two months in between will be my build cycle and so but i, I figured it would be cool to do it with uh, other keto vip members because i know a lot of people that are just getting started the hardest part is getting started and that's really what i why i wanted to help people to get started with um you know starting to develop healthy habits and uh, a daily exercise routine and we're not talking 30 minutes or an hour of exercise a day we're talking just a, a few minutes a day just to get started. Once you develop a habit, it becomes so much easier. It literally becomes routine. And once it's routine, you no longer think about it. There's no internal dialogue anymore about, you know, oh, I really don't feel like exercising today. It's just automatic. It just happens, you know, especially if you block out the same time every single day, your body becomes accustomed to that uh, exercising at that particular time. 
And so for me, it's like, it really is. It's like automatic. My, my, the, I leave at 10 a.m. to go to the gym. Uh, I work from home. I run uh, an online business here at home. So, you know, I, I have that freedom or that luxury of being able to, um, I, I just made a part of my schedule, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's my gym time and lunch time and shower time. So in that three hour block, I go to the gym, come home, make lunch, get a shower, and then I'm back to work at one, if that makes sense. And so now at 10 a.m., no matter what I'm doing, it's just like clockwork, boom. I know, just drop what I'm doing, I'm up, I'm walking out the door. And I never, ever, ever even have that discussion in my head, like that internal dialogue about, oh, I don't feel like going to the gym today, never. Even on days I don't feel good, I still go to the gym. And I don't even debate it <laughs> anymore, I just go. And uh, and because it's just so much of my, part of my routine, and it works, guys. It works. Developing healthy habits. Once you've developed a habit, it becomes routine and it, it becomes easy. You never even have to think about it anymore. And so that's really what I'm trying to encourage many of you to do. But number one, track your calorie intake. I don't, I'll argue with anybody. I mean, maybe somebody can show me facts and say that you can be in ketosis and lose weight. Fine. That's great. And show them to me. I know from my own personal experience, if I'm not counting my calories and staying consistently in a deficit, I don't lose weight. That's it. If I, as long as I stay in a deficit, and especially on the ketogenic diet, I, I hit my macros, then I make sure. Then I, I know I can lose weight, and I can, I can predict how much weight I'm going to lose and how fast, because it's about knowing your numbers. Period. Okay. Anyways, long-winded answer for that. Next is Joy Beth. Uh, she says, "How much is this going to cost? How much is what going to cost, Joy Beth?" Um, I know you're not actually on, or at least not um, able to respond. But I, I didn't ask for any money for anything, did I? Um, there's nothing, I'm not charging anything. The Keto VIP challenge is free. Uh, being part of this group is free. It's not costing you anything. I'm doing this because it's a passion of mine and I want to help others. Does that make sense? Um, and so anyways, there's, there's nothing to buy. There's no ulterior motive here. There is going to be times where I'm going to promote certain products and things like that. And it's just stuff that I use and I'm going to promote it occasionally. And if you click through my link, I will make an affiliate commission or a small commission. Or if I send you an Amazon product and you purchase it, I'll make three or 5% of your act of the product price. So, uh, you know, that's not a big deal. I, I hopefully if I'm helping you to lose some weight and achieve your diet and fitness goals, that if I make a product recommendation and you purchase it, that it's okay if I make a couple cents <laughs> off your purchase. Okay. But I'm not asking you to buy anything. It's up to you. All right. Alice's says, how many carbs in a day should a person eat? What if someone offers me food like a small blueberry muffin or something? Do I guess the carb sugar or probably pass if I don't know? No, pass all the time, Alice. Don't eat anything. Uh, in my opinion, again, this is entirely up to you, but I don't eat any sort of grains or breads or uh, starches at all. The only kind of carbs that I get come from uh, vegetables, typically, like leafy greens and stuff like that. And, and those are complex carbs, not simple carbs. Breads and starches are simple carbs, right? And so I, I, I avoid those like the plague because my body just puffs up when I start eating carbs, right? Um, so I recommend that you avoid all of that. But as far as how many carbs in a day should a person eat? Well, that's really going to vary depending upon your daily calorie needs and what uh, and, and your daily caloric needs are going to determine how many grams of fat, how many grams of carbs, and how many grams of protein you should have in your diet based upon the ketogenic macro ratio, right? The macronutrient ratio. And that the exact gram number is going to be determined based upon your caloric needs, which again, go to calculator.net, click on cal calorie calculator and figure it out. You know, it's very, very simple. This makes it very simple. Set it to sedentary. That's your daily calorie number. Okay, and then you can uh, break that down, especially if you're using MyFitnessPal, guys. It's so stupid simple to use MyFitnessPal app. You just punch in your data. Say, okay, your daily calor calorie needs are 2,300 calories, let's say, or you know, for a lot of women, it's going to be less. It'll, you know, maybe 2,000 calories, whatever. Punch that in, and then when you start to, uh, you know, you can set your macro ratio inside of MyFitnessPal. So you can say 70% fat, 20% protein, 10% carbs. And it will tell you how many grams of each in a day that you're allowed. But as a rule of thumb, a general guideline to get into ketosis, you should be you should uh, for about a week or two, you should try to stay at 30 grams of carbs or less per day. That's tough to do, by the way. I mean, you have to like be very very disciplined to not go over 30 grams because even vegetables, guys, you know, uh, even leafy greens have carbs, right? There's fiber in there and all that, but I'm saying it's difficult to stay under 30 grams of carbs. But for the first couple of weeks, that's what you should do. Once you reach ketosis, nutritional ketosis, 
then you can start to increase your carb intake slightly. Uh, monitor yourself, test yourself, and it's fine. But a, a general rule of thumb is if you can stay at 50 grams of net carbs or less per day, that you should be able to stay in ketosis. But it's going to vary from person to person. I highly recommend that you test yourself regularly to find out what the magic number is for you that, you know, the threshold that you don't want to cross. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, so when somebody offers you crap like that, I mean, I say it's crap because those are comfort foods. Yeah, they're great. They taste wonderful. But, you know, personally, I'd much rather be in shape now. Um, I, I enjoy being in shape and I enjoy the, the feeling that I have. And uh, I mentioned this in the last webinar. I know a lot of you are new, but, you know, getting in shape really changed my life in so many different ways. Um, it just improved the quality of my life in so many ways, like gives me more energy, more confidence. Uh, it's helped me to focus more so my business is growing more uh, and faster because I'm able to direct more energy towards everything. I'm not tired all the time. I don't fall asleep in my chair anymore like I used to. Um, so, you know, again, I that small, um, you know, eating a blueberry muffin might taste good for a moment. But then, especially if you're trying to follow a diet, you feel guilty afterwards and you start beating yourself up. And like then a lot of the times that's all it takes to like say, well, since I screwed up today, I might as well go all in. And then like you eat a ton of carbs that day, like all that. And to me, it's counterproductive. So just avoid it. But, uh, you know, it's up to you. It's up to you to make the decision. But I would recommend avoiding it. All right. I'm going to get to the last question here and then we'll look at chat. And if there's nothing else there, we'll talk briefly about the uh, <clears throat> challenge that starts on Monday. And then we'll wrap it up, guys. All right, so the next one is I'm trying ketos, but as soon as I ate some carbs, I lost it. Uh, you must be mean keto. You're I'm trying keto, but as soon as I ate carbs, I lost it. I gained back 10 of the 23 pounds I lost. How can I go without the carbs for life? Um, I don't know. That's, that's a question you're going to have to answer. Um, again, just like I mentioned before to Alice, I love the way that I feel. And I love the way that I look now. I'm still working on that, by the way. Uh, I think that's going to be a work in progress for some time to come. But for me, it, it, carbs were easy to give up once I started to see results. And, and I don't care that I don't get to eat all that stuff. I'll be honest with you guys. I do one cheat meal per week now. And I only do that now because I, I lost so much damn weight. For the first you know, nine or ten months, I didn't cheat at all. I mean, I swear I didn't cheat at all. But um, probably around nine or ten months into the diet, I had lost – at that point, 60 pounds or something like that. And so I started, and because I do a lot of working out, there's a, a particular type of variation of the ketogenic diet called the uh, cyclical ketogenic diet. A lot of bodybuilders use it. And they'll do like a day or two days of carb up days. Now, I thought that was extreme. So I've started, uh, at that point, I started to allow myself one cheat meal per week. But when I do a cheat meal, guys, I don't go all out and like, oh yeah, it's my cheat meal. I'm gonna go eat a pound of spaghetti and cookies and coffee cakes and all that crap. I don't do that. When, when I do a cheat meal, I still eat very conservatively when it comes to the carbs. Like, for example, I love pizza. I don't, I have, I've only had about six slices of pizza in the last year and a half, and that's the truth. <laughs> but when on a car, on a cheat meal, uh, most of the time when I go eat a cheat meal now, like I like to get a big hamburger with a bun. Although I eat burgers all the time on keto, I don't eat them with the bun, and so I uh, and I love French fries, and I, I eat French fries a lot for my cheat uh, meal as well. I love French fries, but um, pizza is something that I, I I've cut out mostly. But you know, on a, on a cheat day, I might I might eat you know two or three pieces of pizza, and then that's it. Like that's my cheat meal. Um, and uh, you know, I know some people say, "Oh, I got a whole cheat day." Well, fine, go go do a whole cheat day. But the problem with that is it'll take you three or four days to get back into ketosis. Like seriously, if you test yourself, you'll see it'll take days unless you're doing like some heavy interval training or you're supplementing with exogenous ketones. If you're doing it strictly nutritionally, then you'll see that it'll take two, three or even four days to get back into ketosis if you do a carb up day. And I don't like to do that. So I, I would prefer I personally do a cheap meal and I, I don't go crazy when I do it. I just have something that, you know, maybe I maybe during the week something caught my eye on television or you know, I was out somewhere and I smelled something. I was like, oh, that smells awesome. I really want that. Okay, that's going to be my cheat meal when I have it. And, you know, I usually do my cheat meal on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday. Those are usually the days that I will have my meal. And so sometimes I'll be thinking about that one food that I'm going to eat for my cheat meal all week long. And then when I get it, it's wonderful. But then I'm done. And usually I can get back into ketosis within a day and a half, uh, you know, 36 hours, maybe 48 hours. 
But um, if I feel like I've I've overdone it with the carbs for my meal, then I'll just I'll do an, a a um, a particularly intense workout session the following day, and that helps to get me back into ketosis quicker. Does that makes sense, okay? So again, how can you go without carbs for life? That's going to be a life decision you need to, to make, Lil. I can't answer that for you. Um, you have to weigh your priorities. What's more important to you? Eating the carbs and being overweight and you know suffering and probably being unhappy and having low self-esteem. I'm not speaking directly to you, Lil. I'm speaking in general terms to everybody. Uh, I know how I felt when I was like, really overweight, um, you know, borderline obese, whatever. Um, I know I felt like crap all the time. I had no energy. I was ashamed of myself. Uh, I didn't have any confidence or self-esteem. Um, I couldn't play with my daughter the way that I wanted to because I was always tired. I would get winded after everything I did. Well, here a year and a half later, I'm in the best shape that I've been in and since I was a teenager, and I love the way that I feel. So to me, the trade-off is it's a no-brainer. I'd rather give up carbs all day long for for the rest of my life and be able to feel better and live longer and enjoy life the way that I do now. If that makes sense. So it's going to be it has to be a, a decision that you make. You have to set the priorities in your life. I can't do it for you. Nobody else can either. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful. Those are all the questions we had. We got a couple coming in uh, in chat. So let me stop the screen share for a minute. Okay, uh, Lisette from New York. Hello, love your emails. Are organic vitamins better than regular store brand? Yes, Lisette. Um, definitely they're better than, uh, well, let, let me rephrase that. Not all organic vitamins are created equal. Um, a lot of the times, it, it, it's, it, let's put it this way. Organic vitamins are, sometimes you can buy cheap brands that somehow they get away with putting the organic stamp on there, but that doesn't mean that they're still not full of fillers and stuff like that. I can tell you the multivitamin that I take is called Texas Superfood, and um, essentially it's just pulverized uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff like freeze dried and then pulverized, and they're put into capsules, and that's 100% natural. There's no fillers, no additives at all, and so I take uh, Texas Superfood. You can go look it up online, TexasSuperfood.com, I guess, or just search it in Google, and um, you can check those out. That's what I. It's on a monthly subscription, so once a month they send me a bottle. Word word of caution. Uh, they're supposed to send you one bottle a month, but I swear in a 12 month period, I get 14 bottles <laughs> and I think they do that intentionally because they want those extra two billing cycles per month. Um, so oftentimes about every three or four months, I'll call them and tell them to skip my, um, delivery for a month so that I, cause I, I get bottles backed up that way, if that makes sense. So, but I highly recommend that you stick with a really high quality, um, uh, multivitamin and not, and, and I don't like multivitamins cause if you read the site, like. I don't, the reason I don't like multivitamins is because they they just put a whole bunch of stuff in multivitamins in like sometimes really high quantities. Like if you go to GNC, for example, and you buy GNC multivitamins, like Mega Men vitamins for, for guys, obviously, uh, or I think the other one's Ultra Women or whatever, uh, you'll see that they've got like, you know, thousands of percent for some stuff. All that's unnecessary. Your body would just pass that through anyways if it doesn't need it. So, I you know, I think if you can get most of, I, the reason I take, Texas superfood every day is because obviously on a ketogenic diet, I don't eat as much vegetables and no fruit um, at all, except maybe for a cheat meal. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like phytonutrients and things like that that you don't get uh, on keto unless you supplement. And so I recommend using something like a super green powder or like I said, I love Texas superfood. It's just convenient for me. I've been taking that since about the same time I started the keto diet. So about a year and a half. And, um, and they're great. They're great vitamins. So that's what I take. And it, it just kind of helps to get get all those, you know, nutrients and stuff that I don't get because I don't eat as much vegetables. I still eat a lot of leafy greens, though, guys. I eat a lot of salads, uh, spinach and spring mix, sometimes kale. Um, but, you know, uh, and then I'll eat some um, uh, avocado, sliced avocado, put sunflower seeds on it. I use olive oil and vinegar for that. I eat a lot of salads um, because I still I, I like you know, having some greens in my diet. So an asparagus, broccoli, stuff like that. I eat a lot of that. Suzanne says, what about heavy cream? Some people say it's okay to put in coffee. Wonder what your thoughts are. Yeah, it should be. Um, just check the, you know, make sure there's no added sugar. If it's, if it's just natural, uh, cream, heavy cream, then, um, I don't use the heavy cream, but I know I use sour cream a lot. And so sour cream, full fat, you want to get full fat, do not get reduced fat or fat free or because that completely defeats the purpose. So make sure you get full fat. Um, I prefer, like I don't use heavy cream, but I use sour cream a lot for salads and things like that. And um, I think sal like the the kind of uh, sour cream that I get, full, it's full fat. 
it'll have one carb per serving. Um, so that, you know, that's fine. That's not a big deal. So just check the nutrient label, the nutrition label, Su Suzanne, and take a look and see if it's, uh, you know, if there's any added sugars to it, don't use it. And again, I'm not 100% sure because I don't use heavy cream, but I'm pretty sure that most of the sugars are processed or processed out, or I'm not sure how they do that, but um, just check the label. Let's put it that way. If it's one or two carbs per serving, you should be okay. But if it's like milk, like cow's milk, where it's like, you know, eight carbs per serving or something like that, which is all sugars, they're natural sugars, but sugars nonetheless, I'd recommend against it. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, I just want to talk for a couple minutes about the Keto VIP Challenge that starts on Monday. I highly encourage some of you to join uh, if you're not already signed up for it. Guys, listen, I work out all the time and stuff. That is not what this is about. It is not about trying to get people to... I know the, the hardest thing for most people that are starting diets that are overweight, especially I was one of them. <laughs> okay. So I, I completely understand the hardest part is when people decide to lose weight and they say, okay, they make a commitment, a decision that they're going to lose weight. And then they say, all right, I'm going to, and they go from living a sedentary lifestyle to I'm going to do 30 minutes. I'm going to go to the gym an hour a day, every single day. Well, that's a huge shock to the system, especially if you've been sedentary. And so that what happens is people will do that and they'll be all gung-ho for a couple of days, a week or two. Look, I've been going to the same gym now for a year and a half. And I know for a fact, because I see on a regular basis, people come into the gym, not always just overweight people, even some people that aren't even really overweight, but you can tell they're out of shape, but they're not even really all that overweight or anything, but they'll come and you'll see them show up every day for two or three days. And then you'll see them show up about, you know, three or four days later and then another three or four days later. Next thing you know, it's a week, a week and a half in between this, the times that you see them at the gym. And next thing you know, you never see them again. And the reason why that happens is because people make the decision that they're going to lose weight and that they, and they have good intentions to, but they try to change their routine so drastically that it doesn't stick, guys. Old habits die hard. Think about it. I mean, think about it. That's the, the reason why... Any of you guys are here or or the ones that the people that are here that are overweight um, is not you didn't just wake up overweight one day. You became overweight because of bad habits that you allowed in your, your in your life or to take over your life, whether you did it consciously or not. It was, I'm sure it was unconsciously. But my point is those bad habits um, accumulated and they caused you to lose or to gain weight and to become unhealthy. And so. You need to replace bad habits with good habits. It's the only way to ever re truly replace bad habits is to, uh, or to get re get rid of bad habits is to replace them with good ones. You have to because you're we're humans. We are we are habitual by nature, so we're going to have habits whether they serve us or they harm us. We're going to have habits, so it's up to us to make the decision as to which habits we want to develop and to keep. And so um, the whole thing about the keto VIP challenge, guys, is not anything about like, hey, I'm gonna. The total workout time is going to be eight minutes at the end of 28 days. We start off on day one with one minute of exercise, guys, one minute. And so there's no excuses, right? If there's anybody that says that they can't exercise for one minute a day. They don't really want to lose weight, period. I don't want to hear any effing excuses. Pardon my bad, my bad uh, abbreviation. <laughs> um, because honestly, anybody that says that they can't exercise for one minute a day doesn't really want to lose weight. And so it's just lip service at that point. And, uh, and I know, for example, I've got this kind of a little bit of a personal story. My stepfather, he's 400 pounds and my mom is worried to death about him um, because he just refuses. He's for five years, he's been saying he's going to lose weight for five years. I've heard the same story and he's been feeding the same crap to my mom for five years. And the man never gets off his ass off the couch. All he does is watch TV all day long. And that's it. I mean, he, he works, but other than coming home from that, I mean, my point is, is if for five years you tell somebody that you're trying to lose weight and yet you never do anything about it, uh, guys, 80% of losing weight is diet. 80% of losing weight is diet. But you also have to be accountable to yourself, track your calorie intake, that kind of stuff. And number two, if you add exercise in, you can achieve results so much faster and develop those healthy habits. And my point is, you know, if you sit around all day on the couch and do nothing, then you how can you truly expect to ever lose weight in a lasting fashion? In other words, even if you diet and you start losing weight, you're still not developing. You're not developing good habits to replace bad habits. And it's so easy to be sedentary. I'm not pointing fingers at any of you guys. I'm I know from my own 
um, experience that I thought it was going to be impossible to lose weight for a long time. I never, I thought I just was never, I was always just going to be overweight and heavy. And it was because every time I would try to lose weight, I would do what I just mentioned, which was try to start immediately. Like, you know, I'd make a decision, something would happen in my life and I'd say, that's it. I'm losing weight. I'd go from being sedentary to trying to work out, you know, 60 minutes and it was overwhelming. And so, you know, you start to go and then very quickly the old habits start to creep in and you have that internal struggle in your mind, that dialogue all the time about like, oh, I don't really feel like it today or, you know what, I was really good yesterday, so I'm just going to skip it today. All that, those, that's all excuses, guys, and I put it, I've done it myself. So my point is, is that the Keto VIP Challenge, we start on day one with one minute of exercise. The first three days, Monday through Wednesday, it's one minute of exercise per day. That's it. On Thursday, it goes to two minutes. Two minutes from Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday is optional, a rest day. If you want to take the day off, you can. It's completely optional if you, if you decide to. I encourage you to work out on Monday, to, or excuse me, Sunday as well. But if you want uh, to take it off because you're sore, which I know a lot of people that haven't done any exercise at all, after working out even for one minute a day for three days and in two minutes a day for three days are going to be a little bit sore. And so if you need a day off, fine, take a day off. That's fine. Then the thought, the next Monday we start, it goes to three day, three minutes per day for three days. Then it goes to four minutes a day for three days. See, see how that progresses? By the end of the month, at the end of 28 days, the end of four weeks, you're at eight minutes of exercise. That's it. And so you start off very, very, very small, but over that course of that month, you start to develop that habit and you start to gain momentum, right? You'll start noticing changes in your body as long as you're following the, your calorie numbers. And so there's four questions, well, there's three questions that I'm, I'm encouraging people that are going to join the Keto VIP Challenge to do uh, or to, to answer every day at the end of the day or, or whenever and post in the Keto VIP group and, a, and answer these three questions. Did you hit your calorie goal? Did you tra did you hit your ca your macros? Uh, whatever your macros are, okay. Did you hit your macros? And did you complete the daily exercise routine? And an optional is to post a selfie, a post workout selfie, showing like you know you're a little bit sweaty or whatever, because I think that's going to help to encourage other people to stay on track and to, to do the right thing. And I'm going to do it with you guys. Like I don't know. Uh, you know, if I'll post a post-workout selfie, but I'm going to probably post a video using my phone um, and Facebook Live video or whatever to the group every day during a challenge to encourage people. And I might I might crack the whip a little bit, say, get up off your ass and do it, you know, and that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I want to be like a coach in this in this manner and try to help you guys to start to develop this habit. And anybody, again, anybody that says that they don't have one minute a day to work out doesn't really want to lose weight, in my opinion. Um, you know, even if you're really overweight and maybe you can't do the exercises and, and I've got exercise videos that I recorded with my uh, personal trainer to show they're very simple exercises, guys, they're, you don't need any equipment. You need about a five by five foot of space. That's it. You can do it in your home. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to buy anything. And there are some variations to the exercises for people that might have range, uh, you know, mobility issues or range of motion issues, that kind of stuff. Or if you're incredibly out of shape. Uh, you can start slow, and we have two different levels too. We have uh, a baseline, which is like cert uh, try to hit a certain number of reps for each set, which is very, very simple. Um, and there's also kind of a little bit of a higher, more advanced version of it, which I'm going to talk about when uh, when the challenge starts on Monday, and that's um, doing more like interval. In other words, for one for that one minute, you go as hard as you can for a minute, and then you rest for 30 seconds to a minute, and then you start the next minute. Okay, and so again, by the end of the four weeks. It's going to be up to eight minutes of exercise. If you decide to go with the interval route, uh, even if you were to put a minute of break time in between each one minute session, it would be a total of 16 minutes in a day, but only eight minutes of exercise, if that makes sense. So if, if, if you guys can squeeze 15 minutes into your day, and that's what I recommended right at the beginning of the challenge is to just take 15 minutes and block it out at the same time every day, whether it's in the morning in the middle of the day or in the evening, I don't care. Just take the same time and, and I don't know if most of, I'm sure almost everybody has smartphones. I use a calendar app and uh, and I use Google Calendar for everything. I run my business out of Google Calendar basically. And I have from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. blocked off every single day. I never make appointments. I don't take phone calls. I don't do anything during that time because that's my exercise time. It serves me. It helps me to feel better and to be a better person, right? And so I recommend that you just take 15 minutes, block that time out every single day for the entire month of March, uh, starting next Monday, and um, and just make sure that you set, you follow it every day. Just every day, do it because at the end of that month, you'll get to the point where 
it, it, it's like a routine. It, you'll, you'll feel like, man, at, if you were to stop at the end of the month uh, or in, in um, April, if you were to stop, you'll start feeling like you're missing something. And that's a good thing, guys. You know, when you get to the point where it's so routine that if you don't go, you feel like something's off, then you know that you you really hit your stride. And um and and honestly, you'll feel better too. I, I promise you that. Just this this the simple workout that I've developed uh, to do with the for the 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 excuse me the thirty day challenge. It's not about being really challenging. It's about it, the the purpose is mainly to help you develop a healthy habit. Right. That's what that's what the challenge is. And 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 by doing it in kind of like this group atmosphere, I'm hoping to help encourage some people that might not do it on their own. Um, and kind of like that whole like team environment like thing. There will be other people that hopefully post every day, like I'm asking you guys to uh to say that yes, you followed your daily and be honest. Like if you went over your calorie intake for the day, your calorie number, just say so. So did you hit your calorie? Did did you stay within your calorie goal for the day? No, I actually went over. I, you know, I ate too much, whatever, and I and I went over by two hundred calories. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. Be honest about it. We're not going to beat you up over it. Um, did you hit your macros? No, I went a little bit higher on carbs because I ate whatever, whatever. Okay, fine. Try to do better tomorrow. Uh, did you do your daily workout routine? No, I didn't have time to do it. Bullshit. <laughs> I'm gonna call you out on that. Is what I'm saying because uh, you know if you can't if you can't squeeze five minutes in, ten minutes, fifteen minutes in a day, you probably don't want it that bad. So. Anyways, guys, that's all I got. I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, I appreciate the ones that did post questions both in chat and ahead of time. And I'm really looking forward to getting started on Monday. Even people that aren't part of the Keto VIP Challenge, it's fine. It doesn't matter. The group is still available for you guys to ask questions or whatever. You're going to see a lot of activity over the course of the next four weeks because I'm going to be doing a daily video. Like I said, Facebook Live video right from my phone just trying to encourage people um, and I'm really hoping that everybody that signed up, we've got 65 people or six, 63 people signed up for the challenge already. And so I guarantee, I know for sure not everybody will make it um, or participate that signed up. But if we get even a third, 20 people to go through it, I'll be happy. And, uh, and, and really, I hope that those 20 people can encourage, if it's 20, I hope that the, uh, it can encourage and motivate others to, to really take it seriously. So. Thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, I will schedule another webinar and sometime in March um, or at the end of the month or whatever, because I want to kind of do this on a regular basis, like once a month, have one of these webinars to uh, kind of answer questions for new members and stuff like that. Really appreciate you all being here. Looking forward to getting started on Monday. If you guys need anything, post in the Facebook group or you can email me at Bradley at KetoVIP.com. And again, this is a side project for me, guys. So uh, keep in mind, I do uh, run several businesses, so I can't always jump in and answer questions like I want to. But if you send them to me, I try to get them answered, um, time permitting, as soon as I can. Okay? Thanks, everybody, for being here. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.